Well, good morning once again. If you have the Word of God with you this morning, if you want to be finding Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 60, that's where we're going to begin. Before we begin today, while you're looking it up, I want to share with you, uh, for those of you that were at Bible study, you'll understand more. And it, uh, During Bible study... <laughs> We, we study the Bible, but when, we, when we're finished, you know, we'll, we'll start asking questions and we start digging into Scripture. And it's really interesting, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, we get to have some good conversations and learn a lot about the Bible. But one of the things that was brought up Wednesday night and we talked about, and, and this is not part of the message, but I'm going to share it with you because once you see, once you hear, you'll understand. But I was speaking Wednesday night about a lot of false doctrine that's being brought into the church by pastors and by teachers through the through the uh, way of saying that today's time is different than Bible times. And I've always said, I said, well, if you'll just show me the verse where it says where to change, I said I would like to know that. But it was that was Wednesday night. Well, Thursday morning. I've never had this happen to me in my life before. I woke up Thursday morning early with God rolling scripture after scripture after scripture through my mind so much that, as me and Brother Kenny is talking beforehand, at my age now, my arthritis keeps me a little slow getting up. Well, Thursday morning, let me tell you something, I was not slow getting up. I got up and I began to put these verses down in order and John chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 through 19, and Deuteronomy 4 through 2. He just, 4 2, he kept rolling that through my mind. And then if you look those up, let me share them with you. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God. So that's important to know that the Word is Jesus Christ, He is the Word. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. Well, Revelation 22, 18, and 19, and Deuteronomy 4, 2, both say, do not add to or take away from God's word. Folks, God is speaking to us. He is telling us, I left you what you need in that book. Quit trying to change my word to fit your lifestyle and change your lifestyle to fit my word. Amen. Quit trying to make your church line up, make my word line up with your church, make your church line up with my word. And folks, I promise you, uh, it was clear. And he, he, he even went on to give me a, a, another dream, which I'm going to talk about Wednesday night at Bible study, but it's, it's very similar to this. But folks... I believe God is on the move, amen? amen? And I believe if we will serve him and stay true to him and stay in his word, we're going to see things happen. We're going to see souls saved. We're going to see lives changed. We're going to see things mended. You know, and I thought as I was sitting here getting ready, I, I looked up here and I saw Sister Deanna covering up. Bless her heart, she's cold. I guarantee you, if I ask for a survey today, 50% of you are cold right now and 50% are hot. Because I look, I, I, I watch you. Some of you sit out there and fan and others of you are shivering. Well, folks, how do you, and I want to go somewhere spiritual with that, but how, how do you reconcile that? We're in the same room, amen? The, it's the same temperature for everybody, but yet some are hot and some are cold. You live, you realize we live in the same world, amen? And there's people happy and there's people mad. There's people that believe this, people believe that. How do we reconcile? How do we get from that side of the aisle to this side? How do, how do we bring those two sides together? How, how would we ever bring this nation back together? Jesus Christ is the only way we could ever bring this nation back together. And it's the only way the cold can survive with the hot and the hot with the cold. You see, if we take our focus off ourselves for just a little while and put it on God or put it on, you know, put it on God first and then put it on others. You know, I've used this example a lot, but 
my grandmother was a, was a good example to me. She could be sitting in a vehicle, and it could be 100 degrees in that vehicle. She could be burning up. And if you turned to her and said, well, Grandma, are you hot? She said, no, honey, suit yourself. While she was miserable. But see, somewhere along the way, we lost that. Now we're more concerned about ourselves. We don't think about the people around us. Honey, you hot? Yeah, shut that off. I'm dying. Well, what about that part? What if that person's freezing? What if Sister Deanna's freezing? You see... We're selfish. That's the best way I know how to put it. We're born selfish, every one of us. Uh, and you know, you know my love for Facebook, <laughs> and and the term selfie. Lord, Amer Lord, help us. Uh, but just think about it for a minute. And as we start, as, as we're going to begin a new year, <laughs> you're going to love where this message comes to you from. Uh, I was sitting in a hospital waiting room, and I was there was they had the TV on a station that I would never, in my life, have a TV station turned to, but it was turned to, and there were some women on there giving helpful interior decoration tips. <laughs> you can ask my wife. I don't care how you decorate it. I I can't tell you if it matches. I don't. I can't tell you if it goes together. I don't know. But these, these ladies were telling you if you had a low-lit room, how to bring more light into the room without adding more light. And as I listened, God began to speak to my heart. And they said you need to add mirrors to a room to reflect the existing light. And as I heard that, God began to take my heart into Scripture. And I want to ask you today, what are you reflecting are you doing anything to make this world a brighter place? Or are you making any difference at all with what you're reflecting? Now, I don't have to tell you, you know, if we're to make a difference, we're to reflect God's light. Amen? We, do, we cannot put off light ourselves. We're like the moon. The only light that comes out of us is what God, what, what we've soaked in from God. Amen? So, I was so excited when I heard the Sunday school lesson about the path. And if you're not leaving the right path, you know what? Today, you, you got a chance to make a, a change. Well, guess what, church? If you're not reflecting God's light, i got great news for you. You're still breathing. You're still alive. you got a chance today to make it right. And you may say, well, Pastor, I've never accepted Jesus Christ. Well, friend, praise God you're here today because you got, you got one more chance. Now, I cannot tell you if today's your last chance. I cannot tell you that. You may, have, you may have a lot of chances left, but today may be the last chance. But if you would, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 60. When you find that today, if you would stand for just a moment to honor the reading of God's word. Isaiah chapter number 60. I'm going to read you the first three verses. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. And it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising dear heavenly father we thank you once again lord for this day we thank you for the wonderful sunday school lesson and the messenger you sent it to us through we thank you this morning for the songs lord we thank you for the children standing in your house and doing work and lord now it comes to the preaching of your word and god i ask you from the depths of my heart that you would forgive me of my sins lord please cleanse this vessel and prepare me this morning to speak your words and God, Holy Spirit, I pray you rise up in me. And Lord, speak through me the words that you would have spoken. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you rise up in each person listening and open up our ears. And Lord, help us hear and understand what you're telling us. And help us draw closer to you, Lord, and let you guide us and direct us. And in Jesus' precious name, his church prayed. Amen. 
I want you to listen to this again. Because I believe in 2024, I believe this is what God is calling his church to do. And men, you're, you're front and center. Because I'm going to tell you what's, I, I tell you this all the time, but I can tell you what's wrong with this nation. We have had a disappearance of the godly man. They've just disappeared. But listen to what he says. Arise, brothers and sisters, that's us. He's saying, get up, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. God is with us. We just went through the Christmas season where they, you know, you heard the name Emmanuel, which is God is with us. Church, God is with us today. Thank God. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And listen to this. And gross darkness the people. Folks, no truer words have ever been written than there is a gross darkness on the people of today. People are pure de mean. They're evil. Uh, people do things to children that are unimaginable. Uh, you know, I, I talked to a guy the other day. Uh, I had to laugh because I told him I retired, and he said, you're not that old. And I said, you know what, you're a really smart man. <laughs> I said, no, I said, I, but he said, what, you know, he asked me, he said, what was the biggest difference you saw in 30 years in law enforcement? I said, people. I said, when I first started, I said, the worst thing you'd ever see is somebody fighting each other and, or fighting you. I said, then it just slowly decayed to where now that they just drive by and shoot you. Or, you know, I said, people have just, there is a gross darkness on people. That's, and that gross darkness, you see, darkness is actually, darkness does not exist. There is no such thing as darkness. Darkness is simply the absence of light. Well, who is the light? Jesus Christ. So when we take Jesus out of our homes, when we take Jesus out of our schools, and folks, a lot of people have taken Jesus out of their churches, amen? They've turned it into big business. It's, it's all how much money we can make. It, you know, it's all about the almighty dollar. I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to be anywhere near them on Judgment Day because I'm afraid that lightning would run across. But let me tell you something. This darkness, we brought it on ourselves. How many of you at your house, when a light bulb goes out, you just leave it out? I, it was a good light. It, used, it worked good. But now I'm just going to sit in the dark. <laughs> we replace them, don't we? Do you realize today we still have the opportunity to place Jesus back on the throne of our hearts? This nation could still be fixed. Not the way we're headed right now. We need godly people to put God first. We need to go back to when our government first started, when Congress would meet and pray for days before they would convene. You know, I've told you this before. God's not welcome in our school anymore. But you all know what the official first school book required in the United States history was. The Bible. Oh, how far we have fallen. Gross darkness. Folks, if we continue, now I realize there's some things you may say is out of your control. I understand that. But there is something that is under your control, and that's you. I'm under my control. As much as my wife tries to fix me, <laughs> there's a limit to, you know, it, it's up to me. Amen? It's up to you. Gross darkness. The Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Folks, that is my prayer for each and every one of you and me, that when people see us, they see the glory of God upon us. Listen to this last line. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. You ever been outside on a summer night and had a light on? And something show up besides you? <laughs> Bugs? 
Have you ever noticed how attracted they are to light? Folks, you may not understand this at this point, and you may, you may not believe this, but I promise you this is true. If you will live for Jesus Christ in this lost and dying world as it's covered with gross darkness, they may not tell you to their face, to your face. They may not admit it to you, but sinners are drawn to you because you've got something in you that they know they want, but they just can't figure it out for themselves. Amen? And you may work with some of these people, and, and they may call you names, and they may uh, make fun of you, but when their life goes to hell, I promise you they'll seek you out. And they'll say, hey, could you tell me a little more? And my favorite line is, hey, I've got a friend who's a carpenter who can fix your life. Amen. You see, the Gentiles shall come to the light. How can the lost today come to the light if there is no light shining? I can't say that any clearer. How can we lead people to Christ if Christ is not shining through us? Do you think the network television is going to tell people how to get saved? Do you think God love Facebook is going to tell people how to get saved? Do you think social media is going to tell people how to get saved? Do you think our government is concerned about people being saved? Well, then whose responsibility is it? You can raise your hands. It's ours. If the world sees no difference in us, why would they want to serve God? If we fit in, if we look just like them, if we act just like them, if we speak just like them, if our behavior is just like them, why would they want anything different? If, I can't remember his name, Tom, Tom something, he's at Motel 6, and he's going to leave the light on for you. Thank you. I knew you'd know. <laughs> Folks, we've got to leave our lights on for the lost. Amen? And when that bulb goes out, folks, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we wake up every day and we're just uh, charming Christians all day long. Amen? We all, got, we all have bad days, don't we? And sometimes our mouths overload us and sometimes we say things we shouldn't say and sometimes we think things we shouldn't think. But that replace that light bulb. As soon as it goes out, replace it. We ought to be convicted because, folks, we can't quit shining. Now, I'm not saying... <laughs> Because, Lord, this is being preached. We are not gods. We are not many gods. We are lost sinners who, through the grace of Jesus Christ and his blood applied to our lives, can enjoy his righteousness and heaven. That is the only way we get there. But you see, there's people today who want to say, because of the position we hold, we can be arrogant. No. A child of God has no arrogance in them whatsoever. We get that out. Now, if it rises up in that old flesh, get it out. Amen? I tell you this all the time. You can use it on anything. Billy Graham used it on lust for a woman. He said, if you look upon a woman, you know, and she grabs your eye, he said, while that might be natural, he said, turn your eye away. He said, that's like a bird flying over your head. He said, it, it may fly over your head, but he said, never let it nest in your hair. If you have bad thoughts about somebody, or you're, you know, don't let it nest. Get it gone. Because why? Because we've got to let God shine through us. Now, I'm going to share a scripture with you that many times these people who I'm telling, who I'm warning about, these false prophets, they will twist this scripture. But I'm going to give you a perfect example of what this scripture means. And the scripture I'm speaking of is Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, let me tell you first of all what that does not mean. That does not mean to advertise your good works. 
Because I'm going to tell you, I've told you this many times before. And Michael Joe's up here close, so I'll just pick on him. If Michael Joe goes and does a good deed for somebody, then he comes to church and we have testimony service on Sunday night and he stands up and he goes, the Lord has really blessed me this week. I've had a lot of good opportunities. I got to go by and I got to feed 300 people with some, with some uh, money I'd saved up. Uh, you know, and God's truly good and he sets down. Who did he just glorify? Himself. As soon as it left his mouth, my Bible tells me, as soon as it left his mouth, his reward in heaven for that is now gone, and he receives his reward from man. And how long does man remember that? Unless you post it on Facebook for a month for everybody to see, it's gone pretty quick. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. That's what the Bible says. Folks, I have seen churches get... <laughs> advertise what they did for the community. This is the best advice I can give you, and it's biblical. Put Jesus in charge of your advertising, amen? Let him handle your advertising. The minute you start advertising for yourself, and folks, I've seen it done in prayer requests. <laughs> I'm telling you now, we can be selfish. Lord, pray for me. I'm just really tired this week. I've helped a lot of families this week. I've been cleaning and cooking for a lot of families, and I'm just tired. What are you saying? What you're really saying is pat me on the back, y'all. I deserve some credit. No, let me tell you what. We deserve hell. Amen? That is what we deserve. But thanks God Almighty that he sent his son to die on a cross and shed his blood because they said the blood of bulls and goats would no longer cover our sins. Folks, our, filthus, our righteousness is as filthy rags. I don't care how good you think you are. You are filthy inside. Jeremiah says the heart is deceptive. It is wicked. Folks, we are born in the flesh. We are born wicked. That's why the Bible says, and that's why my little Bible that I've got from my great-grandfather has it underlined from 1890, said you must be born again. Folks, you cannot enter into heaven in the flesh. Amen. And while granted, some of, some of you may be nicer than others. Niceness don't get you there. And I, and I say this all the time. And I'm, I'm going I'm to pick on myself. I do not want God displaying my thoughts on a projector screen for y'all to see. I don't want, want y'all to see how I respond to everything. I've told you before. Sometimes my flesh rises up. And I bet I'm not the only one in this room that that happens to. I've told you the story. When, when I was pulling out of Russellville, out, out of the road in this may shock you, but I know the legal way to drive. And another guy who was committing a wrong turn revealed to me that I was number one with him <laughs> out the window. And instead of praying for him, I accelerated and you turned across 64 and went after him. That's your pastor. What was I going to do when I caught him? I'm, I'm not a cop anymore. What, am I just going to pull him out and whoop him? What am I going to do? So I had to stop there at Western Sicily and get forgiveness. I was like, God, I'm sorry. I let my flesh take over. But I bet I'm not the only one in here that does that. We've got to crucify our flesh. Amen? And what my prayer for, my prayer for me is that those get less and less that I grow, that instead of anger for that man, my heart breaks, and that I pray for him, and that he finds God. Because, folks, I am here to tell you, I am very grateful my God's still working on me. Amen? Amen. I'm, I'm so grateful he still convicts me when I sin. But you see... We shared this in Bible study, so if you were here during Bible study, I'm sorry, this is repeat. You'll just have to suffer through. But let me show you what the verse really means. And again, I want to read the verse again. This, Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father 
which is in heaven. Who receives the glory in that? God. I want to read you a story about Paul and Silas out of the book of Acts chapter 16 that shows you exactly what this verse means. Now, I've told you what the world says. Go out and advertise all the good you do. Show, th- But listen to what Paul... Now, you've got to understand, Paul and Silas were preaching the gospel, and they have been locked up for preaching the gospel. And I'm going to read to you Acts chapter 16, verses 22 through 30. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And let me stop right there. Paul and Silas have been beaten, folks, with whips. And now they're in the darkest, deepest, darkest part of the prison with stocks on their ankles and their wrists. Folks, it's the most uncomfortable, darkest place of the prison they can be. But remember, Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Folks, that is what the Bible means. Let your light so shine before men. Paul and Silas had just been beat horribly. They were in the deepest, darkest part of the prison. Folks, they wasn't getting to watch MTV. They wasn't like down to Polk County Jail. You don't have TV. You don't have good food. They were down in the muck and the mud. They had their wrists and their ankles with old wooden uh, clothes around them. It's uncomfortable. But they chose to let their light shine by singing praises to God. That is what the author means in Matthew. No matter what happens in your life, no matter what the doctor tells you, no matter what the banker tells you, you praise God Almighty. You understand today, church? You see, no matter what this world, you see, this world can only go so far in hurting us. The world can only do so much to us because what is... In this world, what is the one thing, the greatest enemy that most people fear more than anything else? Death. Guess what? Guess who has the keys to death, hell, and the grave? Guess who has overcome death? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you put your faith in him today, church, let me tell you something. You have overcome it. The Bible, I love the way the Bible talks about David and some of the, they fell asleep. Hmm. If you're a child of God, you know what? You fall asleep. And guess where you wake up? With Jesus Christ. So you see, Paul and Silas was letting their light shine the way that we should let our light shine. Now, before we close, I want to get a little serious. I know that even when we allow God to shine through us, not all will come out of the darkness. I wish I had great news for you this morning. And I wish I could tell you that most people will be going to heaven. I would be lying to you. The Bible is very clear. The Bible says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way and few be there that find it. Now, does that mean we give up? Absolutely not. So what do we do? Well, we're just like Paul and Silas. No matter how dark this world gets, we keep singing praises to God. And we keep praising him. Would you agree with me that everyone in here has got a reason to praise God this morning? Amen. Now, 
on the same hand. Does every one of us in here, could we complain about something this morning? Amen. I, I, can tell, I, I tell people all the time, I can complain that Tylenol does not do it much for me anymore. <laughs> but God still gave me the ability to get up and walk across the floor. Folks, things aren't always going to go our way. We're not always going to be on the top of the mountain. Each and every one of us will have travels, and we'll go through the valleys. Uh, I heard Derek Prince preach a sermon one time about the loss of his wife and being in the Valley of Baca, folks, that, that will tear your heart out of your chest. That's the Valley of Tears. And he will tell you that even when we lose loved ones, we will go through the Valley of Tears. But we don't live there. God raises us up on the other side. So I want to leave you with what does not sound like encouragement, but it is encouragement. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and part of this I've already quoted to you, but in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, before I explain that, the question that arises is why did the darkness not comprehend the light? And the best I like to give you real-world real illustrations. And one of the things that I had to ask Jesus for forgiveness is for 23 years of my career, I worked narcotics. And I saw the devastation. I saw what it would do, not only to the lives, but to the families and to the children. I saw it firsthand. And for whew, probably 10 to 11 years of that, I was giving the, those people hurting nothing more than a, than a prison sentence. It was only after I found God that I was able to give them what would truly, truly change their lives, if they would accept it. And folks, I'm going to tell you something. One of the most frustrating things you can ever see is somebody who is at rock bottom, their children hurting, uh, all because of what they're injecting in their arm or whatever, whatever it is. And, and them crying out to you and you sharing with them the gospel and Jesus and them, you see the light for a minute and then just a few weeks later you hear that they're right back in the same miry pit that they were. But let me tell you something. That can get real discouraging real quick. And as the ladies, as Jess, you know, they started blooming, you know, and they... And, they, they approached me to be on the board, and, and I told them, you know, I said, look, I've done this a long time. I said, don't get your hopes too high. I said, they're going to break your heart. I said, it's just a fact of life. I said, the ones that we will end up being able to help are the ones that want to help themselves, the ones who want out. I said, if they don't want out, you can't make them get out. I said, what you can pray? And I said, people look at me funny. But I said, I said, trust me, this works. I pray for them to get as low as they can possibly get to where the only way they can look is up to God. Because, folks, if, if their body is destroyed but their soul is saved, then amen, praise God, they've got eternity with a new body. We've got to get real about it. But why? Why did the darkness not comprehend the light? It's just time to be honest. Let me share the scripture. John chapter 3, verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. We live in a fallen world. And most people love this world more than they do Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. That's why, that's why 
if the rapture happens on a Sunday morning, a lot of people will be left in church. That's why if the rapture happens on a Sunday morning, there will be a lot of pastors still left standing behind the pulpits because people love the world more than they did Jesus Christ because their deeds were evil. You know, I've heard this. I'm not going to get into calling names and all that, but there are preachers, and they are big, and they are famous, and they make their money by telling you everything's okay, that God is a God of love, and that you can live however you want to, and there's no consequences. And I heard it put this, this way this week, and I love this. He said, they try to separate the Bible into left and right. We're in a nation that likes separating things left and right, aren't we? So they like to separate the Bible left and right. And they say the God of the left is not the God of the right. The God of the left, you know, well, goodness, he oversaw the killing of kids, children, and he wiped out all the ites, <laughs> the Ammonites. You know, he, he, he got a destruction. But this God over here on the right, he's a God of love, God of mercy, God of grace. And in the way this gentleman put it, they need to go ahead and read the end of the right side. Because <laughs> do you realize what the end of the right side says? That is when the wrath of the God of the whole book comes down. Folks, there is no God of the left and God of the right. There is one God, and our God is a loving, merciful, just God. But he is a just God. He is a ferocious God. He is, you don't want to be on that side of him. And there is only one way to avoid being on that side of him. And that is allowing his son's blood to be applied to your life. You know, I, uh, me and Jen heard it put this way not too long ago, and I love this. You know, when you get saved, they say, what do you, what do you think you get saved from? And everybody goes, well, you know, hell. What? And that's true. But actually, you're getting saved from the wrath of God. Study Revelation. It's clear and simple. God pours out his wrath on the ones who did not accept him. And folks, I'm going to tell you something. If I gave my child for you and you mocked me and you rejected me and you blasphemed me, when it come that day, my wrath is going to pour out. There's people and, and, and I'm going to close with this because we started this about how you shine, how you reflect. There's people we're around every day. We have choices. We may be involved in a conversation. People may ask us questions or people may want our opinions. We have a choice of how we respond. We have a choice of what comes out of our mouth. We have a choice of how we live. What are we reflecting? Are we reflecting God? Are we building people up? Or are we tearing people down? Are we lifting God up? Or are we ignoring God? Don't quit shining. I'm telling you, this world's going to get darker. I'm not, I'm not here to pump the fairy tales at you. This world's going to get darker. But that gives us a chance to shine brighter. If you would stand with me all over this building. I'd ask you to bow your heads this morning. And I want to ask you, I don't want you thinking about anything else right now, but, but you and God. And I've got, the, the questions sound simple, but I want you to be brutally honest with yourself. If you drew your last breath right now, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you'd be in heaven with God. If you do not know that, friend, you're not here by accident. You're here by divine appointment. And this could be the last knock you ever hear on your heart's door. Today may be the day that an accident claims your life or an aneurysm that you did not know affects your body, heart attack, heart attack, stroke, what, whatever. Are you ready to meet Jesus Christ? If you're not, do not let this moment pass.
But I can't make you. No one can make you. I pray that it's a desire of your heart. Because if it's not, you have to be honest with yourself. You love the darkness because your deeds are evil. If you're here this morning and you need prayer for any reason, we'll pray with you and we'll touch the throne of heaven. We'll strengthen, pray for strength or guidance, whatever it is this morning. 